Good morning, everyone. Merry Christmas. It is a joy to be with you today as we celebrate our first Sunday after the Christmas Day. I am Reverend Charles Ulick. It's good to be with you. I'm the rector and pastor here at Grace Episcopal Church. Let us stand and rejoice by singing number 100 in your hymnal, the blue book, Joy to the World. We'll sing... We continue our service on page 355 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we hear God's sacred word. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 10 through 62. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, and my whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom doffs himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations so shall see your vindication and all the kings of your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of the God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our song today is Psalm 147, verses 13 through 21. We will read responsibly by half first. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Pray to the God of Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children of the living. He has established peace on your borders. He has satisfied you with the final sweet. He sends out his command to the earth. And your word on the very shipping. He gives snow like wool. He scatters the overalls like ashes. He scatters his hail like breadcrumbs. He sends his soul. He sends forth his word and melts them. So to any other nation. To them he has not revealed the judgments. Hallelujah. A reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 3, verses 23 to 25. Chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of the Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand and sing our sequence hymn, number 84, or 84 in your hymnal. We'll sing the first two verses uh, before the gospel and then verse 3 after the gospel, number 84.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. This is from chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he who whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only son who is close to the Father's heart, who was made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. May what I am about to say be in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It is wonderful to say Merry Christmas. This is the season of light and joy, and that God is with us, Emmanuel. In our gospel today, St. John, using an incredibly interesting image for us in translating for us the accustomed hearing of the majestic and somewhat profound mystical way of learning of the gospel saying the word became flesh and lived among us but let me give you a little bit of a twist on that what does it mean for God to live among us In some ways, it's, could you possibly hear it in a different way? Like Jesus became flesh and pitched a tent to be with you in all of humanity. Has a different twist, doesn't it? It doesn't quite roll off the tongue as nicely as how John wrote it in his gospel this morning. 
It kind of reminded me, though, of actually thinking of what in an article and actually in our previous last several years, the homeless of many of our communities sometimes aren't always welcomed. And in some of these, in this large homelessness population, we have seen people pitching their tents. So much so in many larger cities that we sometimes can be overrun by the idea that the homeless are around us. Words of having in a local newspaper saying that if our kin and kinneth would be with us, let us create storefront ministries and hot breakfasts and dinners and lunches to help feed these people. And then possibly maybe every 90 days, give them some housing and a place where they can bathe. Isn't that what we would particularly want to do for those who need? The only difficulty with having that is that tent putting is kind of unnerving unless you're a Boy Scout. We don't like to see people who are homeless and those who are struggling to get by in life. Now, maybe if you had your tent, if maybe some of you would have heard of the thing called Woodstock back in the 60s or a concert where you'd go pitch a tent and stay outside all evening and wait for the concert for all the mainline rock and roll stars and pop singers to maybe hit the stage. But oddly, with a tent, you may find yourself not having as much privacy. Because if you've ever been in a tent, there's no insulation from the noise that is going on within your tent. It reminds me of how you can hear, have somebody in an activity and then go inside your tent thinking that no one can hear you, but the reality is your neighbors can hear you. They can hear every word. And when you come out of your tent, you might get some strange looks. You see, for God to dwell with us, God became us even with all of our frails and foibles, and even our maltempered and throwing temper tantrums. God is with us. Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace. He is the ultimate tent planter. For you see, the word logos that is used in our gospel today is used as a way to connotes a rationale, a orderly placement, and operating system that we would all think it would be normal. He is the master creator, our God is. He is the one who helps us understand what life is like. And that's why he, when we think about Jesus coming to us in our creation, and in our incarnation, to be human means that we must live like that in a juxtaposition of how God is with us in all things. We are exposed to the elements. If you've ever gone camping as well, God is with us and is exposed to us. Tenting means that you are also hearing the things that we are not very proud of, like snoring, or if you have to get up in the middle of the night to take care of your business, you hear the zipping and unzipping of your door. And uh, lastly, the tent is also the place where it is the most dirtiest. And you know, we have doormats and ways of keeping our breezeways and to keep our dirty shoes out of our homes. In a tent, you can't do that as well. A tent will always show you your mess, your dirtiness. And that's part, I think, what Jesus and why God brought him into our world is to allow us to know that even in our messiness, God is with us. Even coming through this time where we wanted and have been isolated for so long, 
we are being asked to still stay in contact with each other. Being self-sufficient is not necessarily always about being godly. It means that we sometimes need to be intimate with one another. To be within the Spirit and to have God being with us in the Word, it means to celebrate and to be intimate with one another. Unfortunately, in the last many years, it has been shown that our intimacy level with couples is growing less and less. And having time with our, our dear beloved is becoming less and less. It is with that intimacy that God wants to be with us in the word. It used to be when you had a, an issue, you'd go to your neighbor and say, can I borrow your chainsaw? Do you have a cup of sugar I can use? I'm low. Nowadays, we just call Grubhub, get an Uber, go to Walmart. We don't have to be intimate as much as we would like. We are self-sufficient, we like to say. See, to be genuinely intimate, we means that we have to show our flabbiness, our woundedness, our anxiousness, those things that we have short tempers and we blurt out, especially during the holidays. It's probably why intimacy sometimes isn't always very attractive. But God wants to be intimate with us. That's why he is, can't we come and celebrate this Christmas season? It is in that, that we celebrate in a season of joy and light that God is with us, even in our messiness, like coming into a barnyard with animals and stables, smells aren't always pleasant. The incarnation of Emmanuel, who is God with us, is that unconditional love, that loving kindness, as we heard from Paul to the Galatians today. The word became flesh and dwelt among us that we may know his wondrous love. The incarnation in this Christmas season as we celebrate even one day after the next has been kind of like a roller coaster in some ways, but it is even in that roller coaster that we find God with us more in intimately, more personally, even when we are frail and our sins show. He is our brother. Jesus is our sister. Jesus is our children, our neighbors, full of grace and truth. And in the facts that we have, grace upon grace is with us, that God intimately wants to be in those quiet moments, isolated in a tent, can be very intimate as well. It is in those imperfections that we say, Abba, Father, this is my son, my daughter, with whom I am well pleased. Merry Christmas. We continue now. If you'd open your books of common prayer and please stand with me. Let us recite the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in your book of common prayer, page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, of one being with the Father, and on being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. 
He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Turning to page four in your worship aid, let us offer our prayers as people of God. If you are able, please kneel with me or remain standing. The word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. We are witnesses praying, shine forth in our lives, O Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Almighty God, let all the nations witness your glory. Cause righteousness and praise to cover the earth. Shine forth in our lives, O Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. O oh God, who is near to the Sabbath of peace, comfort your people with safety and security. Assure us that it is not by our own strength, but by your goodness, that we can rest in quiet confidence. Shine forth in our lives, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. individuals and loved ones on our mailing and military prayer list, and that it joins in our work of prayerful intention. Shine forth in our lives, O Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We especially would like to remember today uh, Desmond Tutu, Bishop Desmond Tutu, who passed away this morning. And remember his remarkable work for this church. God of everlasting glory, you have chosen us and loved us before, from before the creation of the world. And in this Christ, who is wisdom incarnate. 
Hear our prayers and help us to await your coming in simple glory. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Once again, let us turn back to our Book of Common Prayer to page 360. Page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace be with you. Please be seated. I have a few, couple of announcements this morning. Just like to remind you that uh, the office, the parish offices will be closed this week um, through Friday. If there are any pastoral emergencies, please don't hesitate to give me a call. Uh, I may not be able to respond quickly or re uh, right way, but I will be able to respond to you. Or if you know of someone who is in need. The... Uh, like to thank all of the, our, our uh, Altar Guild directors, uh, especially Elaine Zelmer and all those who have been participating in our Christmas services and this weekend, and especially Jim Patton and the choir. We've lost a few <laughs> with attrition and <laughs> it is that time of year. And so uh, lots of people are traveling and we just also like to just pray for all of you and if you've been traveling and are expecting to travel, uh, may God be bless each and every one of you and your travels to be with family and friends. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as an offering and sacrifice to God.
Our service continues now on page 361 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave your son, Jesus Christ, your only son, our, who was born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power and to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing your praise. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. I invite you to take your pre-filled communion vessels and raise them. And when you had given thanks to you, we broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, O gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. You may lower your vessels. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. you please raise your vessels once again. The gifts of God for you, the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. This time, if you'd please open up the bread portion of your vessel and place it in the palm of your hand. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, Turning over your vessel once again and opening the wine portion. The blood of Christ, the cup of our salvation. While the ushers come around to pick up the vessels to be properly cared for by their altar guild, if you please join me in singing O Little Town of Bethlehem, hymn number 79, and we'll also be singing Away in the Manger, number 101.
Let us offer our prayer after Holy Communion, number page 366 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, your Savior, Jesus Christ, and assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our newborn King. And our blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth and be the church. Alleluia, alleluia.